Hi all, welcome back to C++ tutorial on Tute Fulcrum. This session is on Modular Operator in C++. The Modular Division Operator produces the reminder of an integer division. This is the symbol that is used to represent the Modular Operator. If x and y are integers, then the expression x mod y produces the reminder when x is divided by y. Consider an example 5 modulo 3. This expression produces the reminder when 5 is divided by 3. So 5 divided by 3, the reminder is 2. What is the result of our operation? Let's verify this with a program. So let's take two integer variables to store our operands. So let me name it as x and y. And uh, I will use one more variable to store the result of operation. So let me name it as reminder. So now I'll initialize x with 5. So x is equal to 5 and uh, y is equal to 3 and now we will compute our operation. So reminder equal to x mode y. So the modular operator is expected to give the reminder when you divide x by y. So x is holding a value of 5 and y is holding a value of 3. So the reminder of 5 by 3 is 2 is our expected result. So let me use a cout statement to print and verify our output. So reminder Okay, so let's build and run our program and verify our output. Yes, we are getting an expected output. The reminder is 2. So when you divide 5 by 3, the reminder is 2. So reminder is obtained using the modular operator onto x and y. The modular operator has quite some restrictions or limitations. That is, your modular operator cannot be applied to floating point numbers. That is, float or double. If you try to use the modular operator with floating point constants or variables, the compiler will produce an error. Let's verify this. So now let's take floating variables to hold the floating operands. So say float x comma y and uh, let us use another variable to store the result. Now let's initialize the values of operands. So x is equal to say 2.3, y is equal to say 1.5. Now let's try to use our modular operator onto these floating entities. So result is equal to now if I say x modulo y. Let's try to print the value. So see out result. So let's build and run and verify our output. We are expecting an error here because we have the limitation that modular operator cannot be applied to float or double entities. Let's verify this. Yes, as expected, our program failed. You can read the error message here. Invalid operands of types float and flow to binary operator. So you cannot use this operator onto float or double entities. The modular operator shows some interesting behaviors with signed operands. Let me show you a few examples. So here, x and y are the operands and reminder is the variable that is storing the result of our operation. Now let's take x as minus 5. 
a negative operand and y let it be positive 3. Now if I say reminder equal to x modulo y. I am applying the modulus operator onto a signed operand as well. Let's print and verify this. Can you see the output here? It is giving you minus 2. Keep this in mind. We will still modify our program. Now let me make the second operand as negative. So 5 is positive. The second operand y I am modifying it as negative. Same program. I have not made any changes. Only I have changed the signs of my operands. So let's build and verify this. So here you can see the output is 2. Previous case the output was minus 2. I will still modify my program. Now I will make my both operands as negative. So x is holding a value of minus 5, y is holding a value of minus 3. Let's check what is the output now. It is minus 2. So what can you conclude from this behavior? The reminder takes the sign of the first operand. The first program when x was positive, my reminder was positive. When x is negative, the reminder was negative because my first operand is x. So the sign of the reminder was depending upon the sign of the first operand x. Now you cannot generalize this statement that is the reminder is taking the sign of first operand. The sign of the reminder is always implementation dependent. The sign of the result for modular operator is machine dependent for negative operands as the action takes as a result of underflow or overflow. So it depends upon the compiler. So where do we use this modulus operator? Consider a scenario where you need to check a given number is odd or even. Say for example, I have a number 12. I want to check whether this is odd or even. What is the simple logic? You divide this number by 2 and check for the reminder. If reminder is 0, we say that it's an even number, else it is an odd. So how do you get the reminder? You can make use of the modular operator. So if I say 12 mode 2, this will give the reminder of the operation dividing 12 by 2. So if this reminder is 0, this will be an even number else it will be odd. So how to check if the number is 0 or not? We will make use of the control statements. So control statements will be discussing in the coming sessions. So this is one case where you can make use of the modulo operator. There are several other applications of the modulo operator. So this is about the modulo operator and their characteristic behavior. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe. And please don't forget to tap the bell icon. You'll get notified whenever we upload our new videos. Thank you.